Hey friends, welcome to Living in His Purpose podcast, where we recognize that in God's purpose, He has the perfect spot for you. If you're a Christian woman and you're feeling overwhelmed and anxious by this rat race way of life and you're ready to find simplicity God's way, you're in the right spot. By replacing negative mindsets and habits with God's word, we're going to give Holy Spirit permission to come in and help us walk bravely in this upside down world. These are not easy things to face, sweet friend. You're going to have to put on your big girl pants. So pull them up, grab a drink, and let's get going. Hey, everyone. I have been getting such a great response from my episodes where I'm talking about our physical bodies and probably what could be labeled as health alternatives, like the breathing episode and how our physical health is connected to our emotional and spiritual health. And I am so excited to see that. So you may like today's episode, which we're going to talk about another way our bodies can be impacted by what God has already given us, and that's called grounding. So you might be wondering, how is all that I'm talking about in these last few episodes even related to mindset? How do you connect the two? And even above that, how do you connect this quote unquote, walking bravely as a Christian to what I've been talking about? I'm so glad you asked. (laughs) First, our mindset. In the last couple of years of learning about the effects of stress on the body, I've learned that our mindset powerfully impacts our physical bodies. Things we've been through and emotions we have felt in the past determine our mindsets today. And in my opinion, and I'm not alone here, many diseases come from our mindsets and our emotions that are trapped in our bodies and they're making us sick. If you don't have a good mindset, you will be sick. It's scientifically proven. Anxiety and depression, for example, can be rooted in the way that we think. So that's the short answer to why I'm discussing physical health as a mindset life coach. And I have to throw in there, though, that I have been in nursing for 30 years. So the physical body and how we respond to things is just natural for me. So I was talking to a friend this weekend about what life coaching is versus counseling and psychiatric help. And Once you've gone through the hard part of dealing with your past with a counselor or psychiatrist and you're ready to move forward, that's when you'd want to get a life coach. And the best way I've heard it explained from my coach was that counseling and psychiatry is for dealing with the baggage that you're carrying around. Coaching is when you're ready to open a new suitcase and plan for a new trip. So the reason that I talk about ways for us to live more healthy and ways for us to address our current health is because these are tools we can put in our suitcase when you go forward. What are your dreams, your aspirations, your goals in life? I guarantee you 99.9% of you are going to say one of your goals at least is to be healthier. Healthier doesn't mean you have to watch your carbs, count your calories and run a marathon. (laughs) Healthy is how you move your body how you're receiving the good and the bad into your body because it's going to impact your soul, which includes your mindset, your thoughts, your imagination, and your heart. And learning how to do this in a healthy way will help you be more driven by health and not illness. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And I want to talk about that in the future because it's so important, but we need to look at ways to deal with this in a healthy way. And we need to see what's going on in our bodies as we go forward, thinking about what kind of mindset we want and what we want out of life. Okay. Second point, what does all this have to do with living bravely as a Christian? Well, in our society, when you're not feeling well, they're more than likely going to give you a pill and that's about it. They may run some tests, they may do an MRI, but they're going to give you some type of medication, send you out on your merry way. And most of the world is telling you that there's no cure for what you have. It's just going to shorten your life. You're going to feel miserable. And the only thing you can do is maybe get some benefit from this medication. And that's the best that they can do. I think it takes some level of bravery to say, you know, I think there might be an alternative way to look at this. And as a nurse and as a Christian, as someone who's just looking at ways I can change how I see things. I feel God has revealed some really great ideas. They're not new, but they are scientifically backed up, which is super important to me. And then how awesome is it that God has given this stuff for free? It costs you nothing to breathe. I'd say it costs you everything to not breathe. It costs you nothing to put your feet on the ground. Absolutely nothing. But all the benefits are ours for the taking. And isn't it like God to give us more than what we contribute? 
So before we get started, I want to change gears just for a second and give a shout out to my biggest fan, Miss Angie. Thank you so much for listening and all of your positive feedback. I appreciate the fact that you can understand what it is I'm trying to accomplish here in this podcast. And I love that my message is getting across. And I thank you very much for all the shameless plugs. (laughs) Okay, so today we're going to talk about grounding. Have any of you heard about grounding? Now, it's going to sound too simple to be true. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to tell you scientifically what it's doing and why it works. And I'm going to talk about a book, of course, because that's where I get all my information are from books. (laughs) And I'm going to talk about studies that have been done and all of the benefits that you can get from literally putting your bare feet on the bare earth. I'm not saying that grounding is going to cure everything, but I'm going to say it might. What's it going to hurt to try? But it's going to take some bravery to say, you know what? I'm going to look at this differently. I'm going to look at it maybe from a way that God has given it to me. And God has given us the earth. Why would it not be able to help heal us? He made it good. Yes, sin has ripped apart the world. It's not perfect, but there are still a lot of qualities to it that are good. But let me stop here and give you a stern warning. I am in absolutely no way condoning worshiping the earth. We are to worship the creator, not the creation. There are Christians who have issues with grounding because of the way that it's been taken over by spiritual individuals and incorporated into some type of spiritual way of life. And that's not what I'm looking at here. I'm looking at what's physically happening when we put our bare feet on the ground. And I am wholeheartedly giving all of the credit to what can happen in our bodies to the creator who is able to do more than we can imagine. The earth is not our mother. The sky is not our father. We have an eternal father and we have Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit in heaven who created us and created everything around us. And in my opinion, just like he's given us plants on this earth to help heal us, I believe that he's given us energy or a way for us to receive some form of healing. Standing on the ground in our bare feet can give us health. Grounding as Christians means that we allow Christ to dwell in our hearts through faith, being rooted and grounded in love. That's where our spirituality comes from. As Christians, we realize that we're more than our physical being. Our physical being houses our spirit and our soul. And in particular, this physical being is decaying every day. It's dying. And as Christians, we know we're going to get a body that lives forever, but after the resurrection. So I just want that recognized when I'm talking about grounding, I'm looking at what is physically happening. And some may say these studies are inconclusive. They might be right, but let me add my own observation. One of the things that has always blown my mind in medicine is when the companies that make these new medications, they come out and they say, hey, We don't know exactly how this works, but we know this is what you're going to get from it if you take this medication. And immediately in my mind, what that means to me is we don't know what else you're going to get when you take this medication. So there is some thought there. I am not saying to never take medication. What I am saying is we need to be considering easier, healthy ways of preventing illnesses. And the more that scientists recognize the effects of emotions, words, thoughts on our physical body, the more we're going to realize there's more going on than we know. Medicine is not just an art. It's a science. And scientifically, we are learning all the time things we didn't know and things we thought we knew that weren't right. For example, let's look at the poor egg. (laughs) It's gotten such a bad rap. First of all, don't eat them. Okay, eat them. But just the yolk. Okay, no, not the yolk, but the white part. Seriously, people, it's an egg. But medicine seems to go through fads. And what we thought was right in the 80s with all the low-fat thoughts, we now see differently. I'm just saying, there may be another way out there to consider getting health benefits. Okay, so apparently I can go on this topic for a long, long time. But let's get back to what I really want to talk about today. And I want to say, you take it for what it is. Go read the book, look at the studies, see what you think about it, make up your own mind. My thought is just to share information that I've learned along the way. I don't take this grounding in a spiritual way at all. And as I was doing my research, I was really surprised that it can be taken spiritually. That's why it's important getting back to this little soapbox. This is why it's important to know what you believe to know what the word of God says so that when we accumulate more information, we can plug it into the framework that the Bible has already laid out for us. Just because somebody is calling something spiritual, does it make it biblical? Always, always hold it up to the light. 
whatever information you're taking in. And if it doesn't fit in God's word, you need to be really considering how you're going to allow that to change your life. So in this book called Earthing, the most important health discovery ever, the author states it like this. The central theme of our book is that we draw electrical energy through our feet in the form of free electrons fluctuating at many frequencies. These frequencies reset our biological clock and provide the body with electrical energy. The electrons themselves flow into the body, equalizing and maintaining it at the electrical potential of the earth. Just like standard electronic equipment that needs a stable ground to function well, so too the body needs stable grounding to also function well. For the most part, the way that we live in our modern structure and how we do life in our homes and at work, we are separated from the earth's healing electrons. Unless you live on a dirt, cement, marble, or stone floor, it's unlikely that you're receiving any good vibes from the earth. Okay, first of all, we need to know how our bodies work. We are a collection of bioelectrical energy. Our bodies function as a collection of electrical circuits. One of the main electrical parts that we're all familiar with is our heart. Each beat is triggered by an electrical signal from within the heart muscle. It passes through the heart and causes the heart to contract and push the blood through the chambers out into the body. So this book was originally written back in 2010. And when they were writing this, there was a lot of research just beginning about the effects of inflammation on our body. Well, if you know anything about what's going on in the medical field, we're now finding out that a majority of our disease processes are coming from inflammation, like heart disease, cancer, type 2 diabetes, asthma, and more than 80 chronic illnesses. All of these things, plus many more, are related to inflammation. So let's stop a second. Let's talk about inflammation. Everyone is susceptible to inflammation, from the world-renowned athlete to the couch potato. <laughs> the, world in, or the word inflammation comes from the Latin inflammatio, if I said that right, meaning to set on fire. Inflammation, it's a really complex response of the body to things like harmful stimuli, pathogens, damaged cells, or any type of irritant. It's a protective attempt by your immune system to remove these agents that are harming our bodies, as well as start the healing process for the tissues that are involved. If we didn't have inflammation, things like wounds and infections, they would never heal and eventually they'd kill us. Your immune system protects you against those pathogens and starts the rebuilding of tissue at the site of injury or even things like a surgery. So when a problem pops up in your body, our body sounds off an alarm. White blood cells and other specialized cells, they rush to the site. You can think of them as like the first responders. White blood cells are constantly traveling through our body tissue, always on the alert for viruses, bacteria, alien microorganisms, and that doesn't mean out in space, <laughs> as well as damaged cells created by trauma or internal irritants. Now, as a weapon, some of these cells release what we call powerful free radicals. These free radicals help destroy these invading microorganisms and damaged tissue. But sometimes they get a bad rap. But in reality, they're performing an essential service to the body. Okay, free radicals are positively charged and in the electrical world, opposites attract. Positively charged particles are always wanting to be neutralized. So they're looking for electrons, which are negatively charged. So a positive plus a negative are going to make you neutral. Well, simply put, these free radicals are needing one or more electrons to stabilize their molecular structure. Normally, these free radicals obtain their electrons, electrons by stripping them away from pathogens and damaged tissues. This activity is killing the bad bugs you want out of your body and breaking down damaged cells for removal. Well, after the initial attack has been neutralized and the process is starting to wind down, excess free radicals produced during this immune response are neutralized by antioxidants or free electrons in your body. This response is triggered whenever you have a disease or an injury. It's called the inflammatory response. This is why when you have a wound, it gets red, warm, starts to swell. There's some pain and even some limited mobility depending where it's at. So now that we understand the basics and the good side of inflammation in the body, let's look at what else can happen. So inflammation comes in two forms, acute or chronic. The acute type takes place as an initial response to the body to harmful stimuli. And that's okay. You want that to happen. But then there's prolonged or chronic inflammation, and that you don't want to happen. 
Chronic inflammation happens when those lovely little free radicals start moving into healthy tissue. They start eating up the good tissue. They didn't turn off the after the initial response. So now they're creating more destruction, which you guessed it, is going to activate the body's natural response to an injury and send more white blood cells and free radicals. And it becomes a non-ending cycle of inflammation. Okay, let's change gears a little bit. Let's look at the earth. We know that the earth is negatively charged. It's flooded with electrons. And when our feet are connected to the earth, these electrons flood in and neutralize those pesky little free radicals that are, for the most part, positively charged ions. But how does this happen? Okay, this is a really complex system, and I'm going to simplify it in my very simplified simplified brain way. <laughs> so there's a lot more to it. If you're interested in it, I highly suggest go looking into it and learning all of the intricacies, but I'm going to make it as simple as I can. Our bodies, like I said earlier, are full of electrical circuits, and some scientists call us a living matrix. And what this means that inside of our cells, we have what's called a cytoskeleton, it's connecting all of the parts inside the cell together like scaffolding. But they even send information to outside the cell and vice versa. Outside the cell will send information to inside the cell. All of our cells then are connected via a network of conductive collagen and other proteins. And they're wired to our cells. It's providing a body-wide structure for antioxidant electrons to travel including to your nervous system and all of the sensory receptors and even the genome in every cell. It connects the big and the small and everything in between. The doctors are using this matrix when they hook you up to an EKG to see the electrical activity of your heart. And when they do an EEG to see the electrical activity of your brain, these devices are following these established conductive pathways. In the opposite fashion, a pacemaker or defibrillator sends electrical signals via these same conductive pathways, but from the outside in. So when you hook into the earth, which is flooded with the negative electrons, which are in search for the positive ions, they're going to follow this living matrix throughout your whole body. And essentially, they're going to give what the free radicals are looking for. So they stop attacking healthy tissue. Here's a quote from a biophysicist, James Oshman. He says, the moment your foot touches the earth or you connect to the earth through a wire, your physiology changes. An immediate normalization begins and an anti-inflammatory switch is turned on. People stay inflamed because they never connect with the earth, the source of free electrons, which can neutralize the free radicals in the body that cause disease and cellular destruction. Okay, so I'm going to list some disease processes that have been observed to decline or go away completely by grounding. PMS, cancer, type 2 diabetes, heart disease, peripheral artery disease, insomnia, chronic pain. It can decrease the viscosity or the thickness of your blood, emotional distress. It can improve your heart rate variability. It can decline your symptoms of arthritis, autoimmune diseases, jet lag. It can normalize your autonomic nervous system. That's your fight or flight response. It can normalize your cortisol levels. It can make you efficient with your oxygen consumption. It can increase your metabolic efficiency. It can regulate your hormones. Normalizes melatonin, which can help fight Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. So how long do you have to do this grounding to see improvement? Well, it depends on the severity of what you're suffering from. This book does go into some details of how long it took some people to see improvements. But one thing the author mentions is there isn't a long lasting effect from being outside for 30 minutes. You have to keep doing it over and over. And if you're suffering from more serious debilitations, you may need hours of grounding a day. So they have been developments. They've created grounding mats and things like grounding sheets to increase your time being grounded to the earth. And that might be something you want to look into. Now, I no doubt believe that some of you may think I'm weird for even bringing this up, <laughs> but it is something that I'm going to try. And in fact, I have been doing it for a while and I'm hoping that in time I'll see changes I never imagined. But as a relatively healthy 50 year old, I'm really looking for prevention. Okay, let's wrap this up. I have a Zumba class to get to. <laughs> it requires a great amount of bravery to go against what most of the world is telling you. As a medical provider, I am suggesting be brave. Think outside the box. If you're one of the many, many people suffering from autoimmune diseases, from allergies, from cardiovascular, poor health, from diabetes, from mental health issues, just try it. Go outside, 
put your feet in the grass for 30 minutes every day for a month. Mark your symptoms and what you're going through beforehand and at the end and see if you see a difference. But also as a medical provider, I am obligated to say, always check with your doctor before implementing changes to your health care. But this one, I don't think any of you are going to hear your doctor say that standing in the grass is harmful. <laughs> we all have some form of health goals. Some of us are more lofty than others, but my goal is to be able to get off the floor without making a lot of noise. So personally, I have a grounding mat. I have it on my bed so I can be grounded throughout the night. And now that the weather is warmer, I'm going to take my dog to go play in the big open field at the school nearby. And I'm going to plop my shoes off and I'm going to keep doing this throughout the summer and see what happens. And yesterday, even after just 15 minutes of putting my feet in the grass, my heart felt lighter. I felt more connected. And maybe that has to do with the fact that I just read a book on grounding, but maybe it doesn't. Maybe it really works. I am choosing to believe that God would give us something so simple as putting our feet on the ground to feel better. Because when our thoughts are not filled up about ourselves and our health, we are able to fulfill all that he has for us to do. And we have the energy and drive to live in his purpose. Thanks for listening. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. If you would like to be added to the email list to be notified of each week's podcast episode, check out the link in the show notes. Have a great week. And don't forget, go put your feet on the earth. Well, that's it for today. Thank you so much for being here with me, and I'm hoping that you received a word. Let me close with a passage of scripture. Rejoice in your confident hope, be patient in trouble, and keep on praying. By doing this, sweet friend, you're going to find that you can take those thoughts captive and change that mindset and be anxious for nothing. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time.